morning on The Dish, Omar Tate. He was just named Chef of the Year by Esquire, but his vision's way beyond just running a restaurant. Tate's combination of cooking, poetry, and art is delivering powerful lessons. Recently, Dan Barber of Blue Hill at Stone Barns, one of the most famous restaurants in the country, handed his kitchen and restaurant over to Tate as part of a series of guest chefs. And for us, Tate put together one of the most interesting dinners we have ever seen. I say to people that I'm a chef just because it's easier for people to understand what I do, but I really consider myself an artist and a teacher. For Omar Tate, it's never been about just the food. It's the music, poetry, and message, all in service of sharing his experience as a black American. That's why as the chef in residence at Stone Barns, he curated a gallery space where diners can immerse themselves in his work before eating. In the kitchen, he began preparing for us a dish called black lung, a terrarium for black breath. It's a salad. So the irony in this dish is that uh, the dish itself is, is an acknowledgement of death and the loss of black lives, um, but it's presented in, a, in like a life force through, through a living salad, essentially. There are a couple of different aspects here that represent body, right? So we have some chicken bones on the plate that are, that are not edible, um, but, you know, like grief sets in people's bones, and so this is represented spiritually in that way on this dish. And then chicken fried mushrooms um, are kind of play against the stereotype of black folks. That would eventually make its way to our table, along with the rest of his stunning spread. First up, his version of Kool-Aid, a staple of his youth with dried strawberries. Oh, that's good. It's pretty tasty. I mean, this is, this is not your, um, it's not your, your mama's father's Kool-Aid. It's, it's not your mama's <laughs> Kool-Aid, <laughs> which is no disrespect to mom, <laughs> um, but this is amazing. Everything Tate prepares has a story, even down to the plates they're served on. That signature salad, Black Lung, is delivered on a cement cast of the sidewalk outside his mother's house in West Philadelphia. To display and converse with the notion of conflict in urban spaces and life. Notes from a black pantry has yams, cabbage, and carrots. It's a still life. It's a representation of a still life of a photo that I took of my wife's kitchen. And there's an all-black dish called Clorindy, named for the 1898 musical by Paul Lawrence Dunbar and William Marion Cook. Beef tartare stained black with squid ink and encased in a rice wafer shell, which represents a glass ceiling meant to be shattered. Which one do we eat with? Um, your hands. No. Wait, um, is it really? No, the fork. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're messing with me. Yeah. The sublime Parker House roll is made with sweet potatoes inside. I'm extremely influenced by, mm. you can go ahead and say it's delicious, it's fine. <laughs> it is delicious. Everyone, everyone's like, like going bananas over these, but uh, the bakery department here did such a great job wow. with these. I was really influenced by um, George Washington Carver and his use of crops, specifically the sweet potato crop. So this is mm. roasted sweet potato in the center with butter and the you know, butter makes everything better, right? Oh, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Then there are the desserts, including honeysuckle ice cream and a black walnut pound cake with cabin spiced icing, cow pea coffee and molasses, a tribute to famed American chef Edna Lewis, the woman who inspired Tate. And if you notice that the plate itself is uh, very different from every other plate. I call these grandma plates because when I was growing up, all, like myself and all my friends, their grandmoms had the china cabinet. Yeah. And there were a bunch of plates that you don't touch unless it's a yeah. special occasion. Yeah. Um, and so because she's my adopted culinary grandma, I wanted to put it on a very beautiful plate for her. Finally, antebellum hoodoo with ingredients he read about in a book about healing in slave communities. Sorghum, peach jam, black walnuts, bone marrow, and chickweed with burnt whiskey, which came from a woman named Elsie, and a helping hand from his wife, Sybil. When you read records of things that happened, uh, sp especially during slavery, like the person who was enslaved is not named, especially not a black woman. Mm. So for this book to actually have her name was very important to mm. me. Um, my wife wrote a children's book called Elsie. And so that reading immediately connected me to her. And so the cup that this burnt whiskey is in, that's a burnt whiskey tonic for health, is formed and shaped by Sybil's hand. Um, so that when the oh, guest is dining... That's this. It's, oh, yep. Yeah. You're holding her hand. That's great. She's delivering you health. That's great. Tate has also created a small book of remembrances, drawings, and writings, unlike any menu we've ever seen. I get the sense that sometimes you have a tough time getting out of your own head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. 
And the, the poetry helps with that? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's definitely an outlet. I've always written. In creating this concept, uh, the poetry became really important because I knew that if I started plating dishes like the black lung dish and said that it was it represented black culture, people would be like, well, it's a salad. Like, how does that represent black culture? Yeah. Um, and so the poetry emerged as a way for me to get ahead of having to have a conversation and justify what I'm doing. 20 years from now, where do you want to be? What do you want to be doing? Uh, teaching children how to live. <laughs> and that means teaching them not just to, to cook, it, it means everything. Anything, anything. And, you know, it's not just me. There's a Nigerian proverb that goes, one tree does not make a forest, right? I am not, I am not the sole person or, or the knower of anything, really. All I know is that I have the capacity to offer the gift that I've been given to other people. He puts so much thought into everything he does. His one-day dream is to open a community center and cafe and meat market and restaurant in West Philadelphia called Honeysuckle Provisions. The Honeysuckle pop-up was what he did before. That's the long-term vision when he's done with this. But I have for you guys one of the, one of the best things, something that's become a hit there at Stone Barns right now, which is this Parker House roll right. with the sweet potato stuffed inside. It is so good. Um, they delivered them for us just um, last night. We heated them up for everybody. Aww. So anyway, they're incredible. So I, I mean, eat and I will take a bite. Yeah, no, I was just thinking that after that meal, it didn't look like it was rather filling. This <laughs> might fill me up, but we got the ice cream, we got the Kool-Aid, we got the beef tartare, we got food in your mouth. 